What's up, boys? Today I'm going to be doing some exploding turrets. Someone on YouTube said this was one of the most overpowered and underrated builds in the game because the turrets would kill too many enemies off screen or something, so it would be bad for YouTube. But I guess we will find out. All of the turret weapons in the game have an overclock available to them called Disposable Tech. It gives a large increase to reload speed but reduces their lifetime and causes them to explode at the end of their duration. So I'm going to be looking for a lot of reload speed and all of the turret weapons. And then in a bit of a weird building path, I'm going to be avoiding lifetime on the turrets so that they will last a bit shorter and explode faster. And that probably will reduce my overall DPS, but it will play into the exploding turrets build a bit, I think. And if I can get the Crack Sentinels as my second turret, they actually have two different exploding effects if you get them up to level 18. Their unstable also causes them to explode into a pool of fire at the end of their duration. So that would be cool as a second choice, but it's sometimes kind of hard to get the turret since there's only four of them total. The Gun Platform, the Seismic Repulsor, Crack Sentinel, and the Shock Fence. So I'm probably just going to take any of the first ones that I get. Let's go with some Nitra Scanner early on for some extra weapon levels. I can also get the terrain mining effects on two of the turrets, the Gun Platform and the Crack Sentinel, which would play along with the Nitra Scanner stuff. So we got the Shock Fence second. That is a turret, but it's kind of weak early on because the range on it is so short. If I run into any of the shellback elites i'm going to struggle very heavily with them with this build since it's hard to even land hits on them with either of these weapons i believe the explosion effects do get converted into any sort of elements that the turrets themselves have so for the shock fence, it should apply some shock stats, I believe. And if I can later on convert the gun platform into electrical after getting disposable tech, that should also work with that, I think. So I'm going to avoid lifetime just to make them explode faster. It's probably not optimal, but it's funny. A slasher and a shellback, so I might just be dead here. I'll try and drop a few turrets as close to him as I can. And he took zero damage from that. Magnet on the left side. So I guess I'm just taking the damage there. I need to get some levels so I can get some overclocks. That's probably the only way I'll have enough damage to kill him. Another reload, want to get that every time I can. I can't really get to that rock. I can maybe bait him into the detonators up here. Nope, they're just dead. Big potency, sure. Try and drop some turrets near him. And get out right before the beam comes towards me. I'm going to weaken these rocks a bit and then probably try and wait for him to stop moving. I just can't stay close to anything. How many enemies there are there. Piercing. I guess that'll help the AoE damage, maybe land a few more shots on him. Let's see if I can pull some detonators on top of him here. Let's go ahead and grab the magnets so I can try to guarantee I have enough damage to kill him in time. Damage or reloads. I want to get a lot of reload here. Another reload. Paint shop or some overclocks. 
no disposable, so I'll take magnetic to collect the XP and materials for a bit of utility. Ooh, Crack Sentinel. That's a good one. That has pretty good single targets, decent reload. No disposable, so I guess I'll have them follow me here. Can't go for the conversion on top of that now, though. Man, I say I'm avoiding lifetime and it just offers it to me every single time. Why? Ah, uh, decent XP early on might be helpful. More luck? Alright, let's see if I can knock these on him as he's running towards me. Some more potency. That did not go anywhere close to him. Another potency. Try and drop some turrets near him. Jesus, lifetime every time. Let's get some pickup to help me get the XP here. And then I'm looking for the seismic repulsor mainly. Firefly does have an explode effect at some point. And it would save me a lot of gold. And it would actually help me with the shell back a bit more. Since they'll at least seek them out here. And the repulsors are very bad at hitting the shell backs. And killing the shell back is my only goal right now since... I am pretty likely to die on this level. Paint job, sure. The good thing is the Crack Sentinels and the Firefly Drones are pretty good against him, so that might have given me enough. I'll take a Potency here, since Fire Rate doesn't affect the explosions. Mainly looking for Reload Speed and then Damage or Potency to scale up the explosions as much as possible. Reload Speed, that's good. Another potency for the Crack Sentinels. Reload or potency, that'll give me an overclock right now, so I'll try that. That's the overclock I'm going for on all of my constructs. They explode when they are removed. That's not much of an increase, minus 20% and then times 30% is I think around 4% more. So the stat bonuses there aren't super relevant for having a lot of turrets. Mainly just causes them to fade a bit faster and explode at the end. Bit more HP. Uh, fire for two weapons. I don't know if that's really worth it, but I will take a big damage for the shock fence. That seems like it's going to be one of my higher weapons here. Reload. I can still look for the can. Well, I have them following me, so I'd have to get the disposable tech, but I'll still look for some stuff there. Yeah, I think getting the Crack Sentinel and the Firefly kind of saved me against the Shellback there. I've actually lost a lot of runs with builds similar to this to the Shellback on the first floor, just because I could never really damage it enough.
another paint job, sure. Um, I'm going to take the tank tracks because if I get the explosion at the next overclock here, I think that will make it a bit easier to like pull them behind me and pull enemies through the explosions. But passing up the plus one beams is pretty stupid. That's just straight up double damage if they're in close range with the turrets. So I wouldn't recommend re replicating that. But I'm going to do it because it sounds cool for the build I'm trying to do here. Uh, fire rates. I think I'll take the reload over that. That's the main stat I'm going for on the turrets. Fire rate would work on the gun platform, and that's the only one. So probably just mocap here. Paint job? That is a lot of paint jobs on that one. Three blues and two greens. And it's level 11. But that is the coolest one for the exploding build since it's the only turret that has double exploding effects, I think. Damage or some potency. Um, I should probably take the purple damage here since I am going to be pretty weak passing up all the lifetime upgrades. Let's go with the reload into the second overclock. Got the disposable tech, very nice. And that's with them following me around, so that should make it easier to land the explosions as well. I should probably turn on damage over time numbers, if the game can handle it. Oops, my shock vents pulled that magnet. Let's take the shock vents level. Some more luck, I am on the second floor. A level 80 run? Um, I think that would be doable if you do some practicing and find out how to like sort of lock a ranged enemy on the magma core behind a wall and then just farm XP for a while with the cryo grenades. Let's grab the reload on that since that's going to need a lot more levels still. I did a bit of testing on some high level runs and I think my highest was 73 or 74, just playing normally with a very strong stalling build. You would need some clever use of game mechanics to go that long I think, but it wouldn't exactly be cheating. Let's take the level on that, I can look for the explosion on that later on. On the Magma Core, there's those ranged elites who shoot like five globs at you. And if they're in range of you, they will keep firing, even if they're behind a wall, I believe. Let's take the cheap level there. I'm down to try some status, I guess. Since all three of those will be doing status effects. That's kind of expensive for a level. We'll take levels on the Crack Sentinel. Cheap level there. And then either crit or potency and fire damage. Probably crit is more globally useful. Actually, cryo grenade might not even be the best for that, because I think you can throw them over walls. 
You'd probably need a weapon that can't hit over walls, but also has very good AoE still. Maybe you could go the Plasma Carbine, since that would just instantly delete everything once you get it up to a high level, but it would just bounce right off of the walls. I think level 80 is doable, it would just take some theory crafting and some practicing to do. Bit of damage. Getting like one or two early legendary XP bonuses would also make a pretty big difference for that run. to win third floor probably too early so I guess we're just going sugar cube for a bit of extra HP here lifetime every time it's just taunting me at this point Take some damage so I can pick up the red sugar for the permanent HP here. It's actually going to be pretty hard for me to kill that guy with an exploding turret build. Since he's never going to be in the spot that the turrets are exploding at. Unless I can like pull them past him and somehow bait him up there. Yeah, that didn't really do much. so far and the bosses are almost dead and the loot hoarder isn't dead yet not looking too great for this level so far where is he another potency gets me 18 and we can shoot out electrical beams to all nearby constructs I don't even see where the hoarder is Let's get the reload speed there to try and guarantee 18 on that one. I don't even see the order, so I guess he's gone. Rip. Let's get some global damage, a cheap level there. Uh, I don't have any form of terrain damage, and that would work with the Nitro Scanner. So I'll try that for the drone. Some crits. Cheap reload speed, expensive reload speed. Some crit damage and damage. Um, let's see what else we got. 
damage for that's nice. And then that's the second explosion overclock that I was looking for for that one. Bit of reload speed for the turrets. So that's why it's cool for this build. You have both of those explosions triggering when they time out, and I'm keeping the lifetime as low as possible, so that happens pretty frequently. Boomerang might work for the run, but it might also have a long enough range that you wouldn't be able to prevent killing the elites. does hit a pretty good portion of the screen once you get the spiral effects with the plus 400% range on it. That's fine, that's probably my best weapon now with the double explosions. Oh yeah, and then the turrets following me around actually should be decent with that. Even though I had to give up the massive plus one beams for it. Another nice crit chance. I think the explosion effect on the fire drones is a balanced overclock. It might actually be the disposable tech, which should just be the same as the turrets anyways. I think it is actually. So I need to get that one up to level 12 to try and find that still. Another potency, sure. Fire rate is not great. That's a lot of survivability with the HP I already have. And my damage is kind of weird since it's mostly dependent on the turrets blowing up. So it's nice to have some survivability. That's probably decent since the Crack Sentinel should be pretty good now. I am gonna have to take some hits here, Jesus. That's so many enemies. Big armor, can definitely use more survivability. I hope the shock fence is collecting most of the XP down there, because I am very low. Another reload speed for my best turrets.
Big damage is not terrible. I'm gonna do something epic with this. And I don't have much gold left. Paint job, I don't know if that'll get up to 12 now. I want another go. Ah, bit of really HP. Alright, pure tank, exploding turret build. I don't know if avoiding all the lifetime was actually worth it. The turrets would still be blowing up at the same rate. It would just take a bit longer for each one. And I am crippling my total DPS and especially my single target DPS by doing that. Let's just push the crack sentinels for now. I think I probably went too hard on the meme build this time, even though it should still work out for this run. But I definitely think I could have executed it better. Like, it takes me so long to kill these flyers chasing me into the explosions. And all that duration would have improved my single target a lot. turn off damage over time because I can't see anything when they're right on top of the turrets. There's just so many numbers floating on them. Paint job? Probably not. I'm not sure, someone told me this build was really OP, but it certainly creates an insane number of numbers to the point where I can't see anything if I have damage over time turned on. Let's see, boss is about to come out. One of the biggest issues is I can't really push through enemies. Like, there's this huge horde, I have enough damage to kill them, but my damage is a bit weird. Uh, these are pretty bad. So I guess I'm just going to run from him in a straight line, and I can probably have those on for him. And then hopefully the explosions will chase after him. Probably do that to push the single target deeps.
So hopefully he'll chase me and then the turrets will chase him and then explode on him. Single target definitely seems pretty bad though. Artifacts probably weren't the best. My only damage artifact is mocap. The rest is some extra weapon levels and some survivability. Let me lower my damage a bit to improve the single target a bit. Some more damage for those ones. Get it a little bit lower. Brings my damage up to 292%. It was an interesting build. The single target just seemed a bit bad, and I don't think I should have avoided the duration upgrade, but I had to try it. And we definitely could have gotten a lot more damage through artifacts here. So for fire, we have about 6.3. So, a bit over 14 million fire dots, and that's not even for interrogator, and you can get the sentinel on interrogator, so that could be a pretty good combo. Shock fence did about 5 million dot, it looks like, and I had barely any status, did have some potency on it, 225%. It's actually not bad damage over time considering all that. Got the double explosion plus following me around. I didn't really get anything for the gun platform. Would have been cool to get electrical plus disposable there. 